Welcome to Do You Have an Idea, your entrepreneurship content channel for the last 12 years. We've been creating loads of content from all over the world. And today we're in Turkey, Istanbul at Uzak Rota Travel Summit, one of the largest travel organizations around the region. And today with me, all the way from South Africa, we have Brett Dyson from Hepstar. Well, if you don't know what Hepstar is, you damn know what uh, insurance is. Yeah. And it's the global, one of the world's largest global insurance tech company. And he's our founder. And it's really interesting. I mean, thank you for being with us at Do You Have an Idea? It's really interesting to show entrepreneurs different verticals and how can you be successful in different verticals? Because yeah. they always look at the big picture. Yeah. But look, I mean, you're here, a big, important company, million dollar plus annual revenues all the way from South Africa and you founded it. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you founded Hepstar? Um, so, well, first of all, thank you uh, for having me. Um, it's actually been quite a journey and I think a lot of people underestimate the sort of entrepreneurial challenges that you have along the way. So initially, my, my background is actually very finance. I studied a lot of finance degrees, chartered accountancy, chartered financial analyst. I thought I'd be an investment banker <laughs> in New York. That was sort of the plan. And then I, I got introduced to a, a, a Swedish private investor um, who said to me, look, do you want to go on this journey with me? And I did. And, and I haven't turned back. And um, to be very honest, I think when you enter that space, you don't know all the answers. Um, no one does, especially when you're trying something new. Um, and people forget that there are going to be ups and downs and there are going to be challenges. And, and we've had our fair share of that. Uh, when we first started Hepstar, which is essentially an insure tech platform uh, where we offer insurance and, and ancillary products in the travel environment, as well as merchandising features like a recommendation engine, multivariate testing, etc., is that we try to, to bring our concept to market uh, using a third party platform. So for the first two years, we really struggled. We had this concept of, you know, we want to personalize products in part so customers don't get a static travel insurance product or, or something that's the same for everyone. And we really struggled for the first two years because we're using a third party software platform which didn't cater to what we were doing. It was almost like banging your head against the wall. And that's really where we took the first step after two years to say, you know what, there's this wonderful opportunity and we're actually not going about it the right way. We started investing a bit more. We brought in our own CTO. Why are banging your head is a very typical answer. I yeah. banged my head many times and you yeah. probably still do actually, but this oh. main obstacle that you yeah. surpassed. Huh? It's, it's, you know, you, once you get to that point and, and I think you, you realize that you can't continue beyond that point without actually making a significant change, um, it actually takes the weight off your shoulders because you know that what you're doing is the right decision ultimately. And, and what we did is we made the decision to, to really invest in our own technology. So we brought in a CTO, some engineers at a later stage, some data scientists to really look at our BR tables, data marts, our algorithms, how we really recommend products. And, and that journey took about a year um, to really get the platform fully functional. And we haven't really looked back. And it was probably the, the biggest and best decision we've, we've, we've made in our journey. And I think that, that for everyone, that journey is different as well. You know, everyone has different challenges. You know, some of the challenges we had were, were getting reputable insurers to engage with us and, and, and allow us to put their content within our platform and serve it through the APR. Um, so, Companies like AXA or Chubb or Ergo, um, Orient in, in, in the Turkish market, for instance. And, and that takes time and it takes credibility and you have to have a platform that is ultimately stable. So things take time. And I think once you realize that, particularly in our environment where we are a B2B facing technology company, uh, so we work with partners like Turner, Billet, Billet, IATA, etc. Um, or Travix, uh, you know, a lot of distribution partners in the travel um, vertical or industry is that ours is, is very specific on the B2B side, whereas someone in a more B2C facing environment um, would of course have very different challenges to what we have. 
predominantly on the cost acquisition side when you're looking at, at customers and, and how you fight, you know, yeah, the bigger yeah. meters and, and the marketing costs, etc. So yeah. You're right, but it's really important. I really wanted to have this chat with you since I found you. Because entrepreneurs always look big, global. I want to be like booking.com, but, but there are so many verticals that you could be successful. Exactly. And uh, as an entrepreneur who's been all these, all through this road and banging your head, what are the sort of takeaway messages you, you would like to give to entrepreneurs who are like at the beginning of that stage, ideas, ideation stage, let's say? I think that's, I think they're a couple. I think first of all, you know, not everyone can be a Facebook, a Google, a booking.com. I think that time has, has come and gone, but there are niches within verticals, like you said, or industries where they're fantastic opportunities. And in saying that, maybe you are the next Google, you know, maybe you're the next Amazon, Facebook, who knows? You know, at the end of the day, if you've got an idea um, and you back yourself, then, then give it everything. But some of the, the things that I would say just be careful of, number one, people, be careful of who you bring on board. So in a startup environment, you need people that are engaged, that love your concept, that want to be part of your journey. Um, and some of the, the the lessons we've learned is that when you sometimes make those bad hires in our environment it's a lot more difficult to come back from that effectively so when bringing on people rather wait for the right person than bring someone on that you think's going to fill the gap that for me i think if i could go back i would have made maybe one or two different decisions that's important um, right? Because not only is it from a, a work perspective and a passion perspective, it's how those people affect your environment that you build out for your team. Um, the second is, and, and we've been, I think, very fortunate with, with the investors that we've got. Um, you know, we've been given a mandate to do what we need to do. And I think that, that when it comes to investors, just remember it's a marriage. You know, as soon as you get funding or, or money from someone, that relationship changes and you're in a marriage. And bring on people that, that you know you can trust, that, that are really invested in what you want to do and, Perfect, and yeah. have a passion also for, for what you're trying to achieve. Because if that investor or that external party doesn't, along the line you're going to have problems. And I've seen it with, with friends of mine um, that, have, that have started companies. Particularly, I, I spent about three or four months in, in Sunnyvale, uh, the Sil Silicon Valley in, in 2017. Is that that can become very problematic. You know, you need someone that trusts you, that will back you, because they're going to be good times and they're going to be bad times. And when you're still working out things and you haven't got quite right the product market fit, and I hate that word, product market fit, you need someone there that's going to back you and help you along the way. And also challenge you, are you doing the right thing? So other than the funding part and making sure it's the, the right type of fit for you, also make sure whoever comes on board can advise you, can help you. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about funding, it's also about what they understand, what their experience has been, and where they can help you. And finally, since I found all the way from South Africa, you came to Turkey, most entrepreneurs in these far out regions of the world, Asia, Middle East, Australia, they feel like they're stuck in that sort of ecosystem. And you always look up to these Silicon Valley boys and entrepreneurs and all this, this world, and it seems as if that's the first goal. But now you're here, all the way from South Africa, a successful global company. What are the sort of tricks of that? And what, how, what would you advise those entrepreneurs? Because it's really depressing. Like you're in, you're in a country, you want your voice to be heard. You always see these top guys, millionaires, billionaires from Silicon Valley. You, want, you feel like, oh, am I left out? Should I move out there? But you're from South Africa and you, you, you did it. I think it's, I think it's perspective. I think you always need to have perspective. And I get that from, from reading books. A really good book to read is, is Trillion Dollar Coach. You know, and it's, and it's not comparing yourself to, to someone that's in Silicon Valley or London or Amsterdam or Istanbul. Um, it's not really about that. And I think you need to get past that because it's about what you're doing right now and focusing on that and making sure that whatever product you're bringing to market, that it's the best product that you can bring to market. Everything else will fall into place. If it's the right product, it's gonna go global. If it's not a global product and, it, and it's amazing and it's localized, you're still successful. You've still done something which 
is incredible for that particular market. So I wouldn't benchmark myself against an, an Elon Musk or, or Steve Jobs or, because that would just be silly. You know, you, you need to think about where you're at and, and learn from the guys that have done exceptional jobs because they, they're not all amazing. They're not all amazing. They had amazing traits and they did amazing things, but they also didn't do some things amazingly. So take the good, get rid of the bad, and learn. Um, my biggest suggestion would be start reading more books and, and, and learning from the guys that have achieved something. Uh, I mean, we're still a fairly young insurtech company um, and we're doing well, but we're still learning, we're still growing. I'm still taking advice from from really anyone, sometimes customers as well, because you, you need to be in that, 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 that mind frame that, that you don't know everything, because you don't know everything. I think that was a great way, I mean, a great uh, thing to close the video. Really great takeaways for entrepreneurs. Thank you so much, Brett Dyson, from Hepstar, from all the way from South Africa, was with us. Thank you so much, and for the entrepreneurs, if you want more content like this, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And till the next video, take care and goodbye.